All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on these knives, and these are the some of the variations of the Ohio River Jack, which is an exclusive for traditional pocket knives. So traditional pocket knives is a dealer, uh, originally C. Reisner Cutlery, that is run by um, Austin, and Austin is someone I met at the Great Eastern Cutlery Rendezvous, it's a really nice guy, and I think it's great that he has really helped to bring traditional pocket knives and C. Reisner cutlery into the modern day. Uh, that's one of the, it's been, it's a dealership that's been around for a long time and was run by his grandfather. And he really has, I think, brought it into the, the current day by having a really great online presence with Instagram um, and YouTube, so you can definitely subscribe to his YouTube channel, and also by bringing out some really cool modern slip joints. So before we get into them real quick, make sure you subscribe to my channel, click the bell and select all so you know when I post new videos. Check my other social media out. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website knifethoughts.com where I post articles on knives like this and knife related topics. But these Ohio River Jacks are Austin's first exclusive slip joint. So these are a modern slip joint made by QSP Knives. So they are made in China, but they are really nice quality uh, and kind of unique. So let's talk about them. There's several different variations and the main differences are two things. So obviously different handle materials. So you have micarta or titanium. Within the micarta, you have green micarta, natural or tan micarta, and black micarta. And then with the titanium, you have jig titanium. Now, all of them have titanium on the handles. The bolsters and liners, which are integral, are titanium on all of them, but on the titanium handled or covered version, it just is solid. There's no covers added on top. And then the titanium is jigged. Um, so that's one of the big kind of differences between the variations. But then the other big difference is the blade shape. So there is a spear point. There is a sheep foot. And there is a Warncliffe. Uh, so really traditional classic blade shapes. And then one other variation is the two-bladed version. And this is one of the things that I think is really unique among modern slip joints is this two-bladed version. It's just not something that you see on a lot of modern slip joints. They're mostly single-bladed knives and, you know, relatively thin. This is a big old knife with two full-size blades. You really just don't see two full-size blades very often on modern slip joints. If there are more than one blade, it's usually um, a main blade and a secondary. But the two-bladed version has the spear point and the Warncliffe, but unlike on the single-bladed versions, on the two-bladed version, the long pull is only on one side. Uh, so it's only on the side that you need it on, which for the Warncliffe is on the back and for the spear point is on the front. So um, those are the different variations. Austin sent me several, as you can see, which I really, really appreciate. I am going to be doing some giveaways of these. Uh, so this one, I'm already doing a giveaway uh, for members of the Barlow Bearcat Club, which is a club that I run for uh, fans of Barlow Knives, and Austin is actually a member. So um, that's uh, kind of an interesting connection. Um, so that this one's being given away in that. And then I do plan to give this one away also at least. So make sure you, uh, again, subscribe for that and you know see how I do it. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it yet, but I really appreciate Austin's generosity and I wanna share it with you know the people who uh, follow along and have been you know watching my videos and I really appreciate your support as well as Austin's support. 
And I've also really appreciated getting to check these out. So I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts on the different variations, uh, but first I wanna show you some comparisons, uh, both size and construction. So I'm gonna use the Sheepfoot in Jig Titanium, which I'll tell you right off the bat, is probably my favorite just because I really love the Jig Titanium. And then I'm also going to use the two blade just to show you, you know, the, the thickness of it compared to some other knives. But for size comparisons, I think a really great comparison is the Greatest Cutlery number 36. Why is that? Well, this 36 is an elephant toenail, and I would call this a modern interpretation of an elephant toenail. It is kind of an equal end, you know, it's not really a cigar jack because the ends are, are flat, they're not rounded. Um, so I think that if I was going to say, you know, what pattern most influenced or, or what the Ohio River Jack or what um, the Ohio River Jack is most kind of reminiscent of, I would say a, an elephant toenail. You can see the elephant toenail is pretty much a uh, kind of a really thick cigar jack with, you know, a little bit flatter ends, but not completely flat like on the Ohio River Jack. So the 36 is actually a good bit bigger in both width or tallness and length. Uh, definitely in length. Pick them up so you can see a little bit better. So there are the handles and there are the blades. And then in thickness, they're relatively similar actually. The 36 might be slightly thicker on the single bladed version but then to compare the two-bladed version, which isn't really a fair comparison, but you can see that the two-bladed version of the Ohio River Jack is a good bit thicker. So I think that the, uh, the 36 is a great comparison both in size and as a kind of example of the pattern that inspired the Ohio River Jack, at least from my perspective. Uh, another size comparison here, also with a sheep foot actually, is a Great Eastern Cutlery number 15. You can see that it is quite a bit smaller, a little shorter, and um, definitely a lot less tall. And then the classic Case Trapper, which will be a good two blade comparison for width. You can see that it's longer than the Ohio River Jack, but when we look at the width, the Ohio River Jack is definitely wider. Uh, so these both have full width blades, full length blades, but one big difference is that the liners on the Ohio River Jack are a lot thicker. And that's something that's common on modern slip joints versus traditional slip joints. So there are some size comparisons, but now I wanna give you some kind of quality and, and I guess category comparisons. So, couple different modern slip joints to compare these two. You have a Rough Rider Reserve. So the Rough Rider Reserve are higher end knives made by Rough Rider than their normal stuff and are in the 50 to 40 to $80 range, I believe. This is the only one I have right now. This is actually the first of them. Um, but I would say that the Ohio River Jack is a good bit nicer in construction, but also a little bit less traditional. You can see that the Rough Rider Reserves are typically pin construction with normal kind of brass uh, liners and things like that. Also, this first version of the Rough Rider Reserve didn't have a stop pin, whereas the Ohio River Jack does but they actually did add them to the subsequent runs of the Rough Rider Reserve knives. So that's one thing that I do really like about the, the Ohio River Jack is that it has a stop pin in there. And the reason for that is if you watch my videos, you know I hate blade wrap and I, it's all too common on some knives from some brands. Um, so I hate blade wrap and the stop pin stops the blade wrap and in my opinion, so one thing that, that I know Austin was worried about and that, you know, some people do dislike is that it can kind of change the sound, the walk and talk. But for me, it still sounds good. It has a little bit more of a muted thud 
than something like another comparison that I'll make, which is to a jack wolf knife, jack wolf knives knife. So you can hear that this without the stop pin sounds a little bit more like this, a really traditional slip joint than this does. Very similar on opening and to half stop, but that stop pin is a little different. For me, it doesn't really detract. I think that it still sounds good. The action is great. And I think that it, overall, it's definitely a win. I really dislike blade wrap. I don't wanna have it on a knife that I'm gonna carry and use. And I definitely don't wanna have it on a knife that's you know, a collection piece that has damage every time you close it. So I appreciate the stop pin. But speaking of the Jack Wolf knives, um, the truth is that, that these Jack Wolf knives are a good bit more expensive in the $275 or $300 range. These are in the $150 to $200 range. Um, and so the Jack Wolf knives are finished a little differently and I think more finely. So to give you some kind of in-depth examples of that. The Jack Wolf knives have really flat finishing on the springs and liners. And while the Ohio River Jacks don't have any gaps, certainly there are no gaps on any of these that I've seen. It's just a little bit different in that there's some scratches on the back spring. Um, you might be able to catch your finger a little bit on there so it's not perfectly flush. Um, but it's nitpicky, I will say, you know, it's definitely a nitpicky difference. Uh, now, one place where you do see a difference is in the finishing on the bolsters. Um, so the Ohio River Jacks uh, have kind of more of a, a rounded finish. You can see that they're kind of polished off. And they are, you know, a different kind of screw setup. But um, the, the bolsters are more of a rounded finish versus the, uh, I guess, flatter, more chamfered finish of Jack Wolf knives. But compared to something like a Lion Steel, the Lion Steels are really nice, uh, but I do think that the, the QSP made Ohio River Jacks, they feel a little bit more traditional, more... Um, uh, just just a little bit more uniquely fit for each knife. And why I see that, say that is because these line steel knives, I really like this line steel Slim Dom, which is a collector knives exclusive. I really like it. It's a great knife. But how they finish the back spring, and this is true on the metal handled and you know other handle material knives, is they have a rounded back spring and then the flat handle scales. And so they don't meet together at all. And um, they, they do have gaps. I've had a few of these and they tend to have um, slight gaps between the springs and the handles. Uh, I also don't like this um, screw as much as I like the flat of the Ohio River Jack. And uh, same deal here. These do have a stop pin so you can hear that it's a little bit of a different sound. But I would say it's a different finish, pretty similar, I guess, in quality, um, but definitely different in the back spring and, and how they're fit together. Uh, so that's something to be aware of there. And then just one other, well, I guess I'll show you two other. Uh, you have a Kershaw um, Federalist. This is a USA main slip joint, about $110. But honestly, I would say that this is a lesser quality. I do like this knife, but it actually bent in my pocket, uh, so in a canoe trip, sitting on it, and I guess maybe I'm just big enough that it that it bent. Um, but like a lot of modern slip joints, this is a detent slip joint, so there's two springs on the sides, and I just don't enjoy that as much as a classic back spring slip joint. So I appreciate that. It has a nice, strong, solid feeling back spring, and uh, is more traditional in that sense. And then here, just to show you, because it is relatively similar in its shape, is the James Brand Ellis. My brother gave me this one. Uh, it's great for my work where you have to um, cut your fingernails pretty frequently. I actually need to right now because it has 
a nice pair of scissors, but um, definitely a different style than the Ohio River Jack with the G10 and such. But I think these Ohio River Jacks are really well made. Uh, there's no issues on any of these, and this is a bigger sample size than I usually am able to, you know, test from. Because of the generosity of Austin, I'm able to test uh, five of these, and actually I got to see the prototypes also and felt that they were, you know, equally well made. So I think they're a really well made knife. They are a big knife, a kind of a, a chunky, I guess, knife because of the shape, the squared off shape but I have carried them and, and really enjoyed it. Uh, now, talking about the blade shapes, like I said, uh, I love, oh well, talking about the blade shapes first, I love this sheep foot. It is actually a saber ground sheep foot. So it's not the thinnest ground knife out there, for sure, but it cuts well enough. Um, I use this for normal cutting, cutting cardboard, things like that, and it, it cuts, you know, perfectly fine. Um, I just really like how it looks. I like that flat. I like the long pull in there. Um, it just looks great to me. So I really like the sheep foot for its looks, its classicness, probably not the best cutter of them. I think the best cutter is probably the Warncliffe. So really a pretty good looking Warncliffe also, not the most, um, I guess a more abrupt curve down towards the tip. Uh, as worn cliffs go, but this one is ground nice and thin. So um, I don't know how well you can see that, but it is ground nice and thin and cuts really well. So for slicing, I think that this one probably slices the best, but the spear point also cuts well. It's also, you know, ground nice and thin. You can see that towards the tip there. But I will say that I, I don't love the design of this spear point in that it has what's called an upward cant to the blade. So what that means is when you look at this knife and I'm lining the top edge of the handle along with my camera uh, line, so it's flat here, you can see that this part of the blade is a good bit higher. Um, so it's, it's higher up than the rest of the handle. To try to show you that here, you can see if I set this on the blade and on the handle, there's a gap there. And that's because the blade, the spine of the blade, actually turns upward. I just don't prefer that from an aesthetic standpoint. It's um, sometimes called a, a broken back or something like that. Uh, in, traditional knives, I just call it an upward cant to the blade. And for me, it's just not something that I love the look of. I don't think that it's gonna cause any practical issues. And I have heard some people really love uh, this particular spear point. So if it's for you, that's great. It's just not my favorite of the three, but it will cut great. And um, it is a relatively classic shaped spear point. If, uh, if only, you know, it didn't have that upward turn, I probably would, really like it. But it is my least favorite blade shape of the three, uh, even though practically it's just as good. Um, now, speaking of the action, these have really nice action. As you can see, it's easy to use this nail nick. Well, not nail nick, long pull, as I've been calling it. It's easy to use that. Snaps open and close very nicely, but they all also can be pinched. So you can see I can pinch the spear point. I can pinch the sheet foot really easily. I can pinch the worn cliff. The only caveat to that is that on the double blade, obviously you can't pinch it uh, because the other blade is in the way. So you do have to use the long pull on the double blade, but you know that's common with double bladed knives. So, um, I think that the, it's a really cool thing that Austin has done to bring these to the market. Um, I have really enjoyed getting to check them out and carry them. I have carried them all and used them all. So if you win one, you know, it has been used, but you know, I guess you, it's probably all right, right? To win a, a slightly used knife. Um, 
But like I said, that this one is my favorite and I really like this jigging. I think Austin worked hard to get this jigging pattern the way that uh, he wanted it. So uh, I think it's really cool. Um, I love Jig Titanium and I have wanted a Jig Titanium knife for a long time. So I'm happy to have gotten this one. And also, just to show you, Austin's, one of Austin's exclusive QSP also made penguins. So this one has uh, a jigging, a jig titanium also. And I really love the look of that. It makes for a cool carry to carry uh, both of those together. So if you are interested in modern slip joints and uh, you like this, this cool kind of um, modern uh, variation of an elephant toe, then I definitely would check these out. I will have a link in the description to where you can get them on Austin's site. Uh, definitely let him know that you were sent there by Knife Thoughts. Uh, and if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. You can leave any comments you have and uh, make sure you subscribe. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.